Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. I want you to know that we just really appreciate you joining us on today. You know, this has been a very upsetting and trying week. Our Sunday School's lessons from this whole quarter has been on justice. What is justice? Doing the right thing. Every Sunday we've been talking about justice, what it looks like and what it doesn't look like. And this week and over the years, we've witnessed so much injustice in our world, in our country today. And my message today for us is we've got to pray. We've got to pray and we've just got to pray some more. And we have to trust God to get us through this tough time in this country. Our scripture is Psalm 56, 1 through 4a, and it reads, Be gracious to me, God, for a man is trampling me. He fights and oppresses me all day long. My adversaries trample over me all day, for many arrogantly fight against me. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. So the scripture is telling us that we have to trust in God. Don't be afraid. Just trust in God to see us through. Our song is, I will trust in the Lord. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. And I'm going to do this until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will Where the shell I go. 
Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus Christ we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege. Thank you for the honor, another opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us again and giving us another chance to come before you. Lord, we come before you today, Father God, trusting and depending, leaning on you, Father God. For you are our hope. You are our strength. You are our strength in times of need. Now, Lord, we ask you to bear us up. Keep us focused. Bless us to walk in your will. Remind us of your way. That after this service, Father God, someone will know Jesus as never before. Bless us, Lord, as we come to your word, that your word will fall on good soil. That life will roll on just a little while longer. That we will be made the better in the name of Jesus. We ask you to bless us now. Deliver your word to us, Father God, as only you can. That we will be made the better. That we will tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Jesus Christ. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Whether you're joining by uh, Facebook Live or by Zoom, thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. We thank God again for giving us this privilege to come before you from the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiremai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. Thank you for joining us. We're glad to have you with us on today. Our message today will come from Psalm number 30. In the Old Testament, the book is Psalms. Psalm number 30, verses 1 through 4. Psalm number 30, verses 1 through 4. David is, is speaking and he is singing this song after he has been delivered so I want to call your attention today, for we look forward to deliverance. Psalm number 30, verses 1 through 4. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up, and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. O oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. I want to say, sing unto the Lord. Sing unto, unto the Lord. There is, as many would say, a lot going on. There are enemies all around us. There are those who have bombarded us. We have COVID-19 running rapid, taking out people we know, people we don't know, family members, friends, followers, COVID-19 is running rapid, taking out preachers, pastors, congregations all over this world. We got a lot uh, we have a lot going on. Not only that, black and brown men are still dying in the street at the hands of each other 
and at the hands of law enforcement officers. We find ourselves in the midst of a lot going on. I want to say to you today, there's a way that the godly should handle it. I wonder within myself, I often thought, how, how do we handle such calamity? When we have one who would take the life of one in the middle of the street, while he knows video cameras are going, no decency, no care for human life other than his life. While we see, we see in the middle of the street a man kneeling down with his knee on the neck of another human being. Hatred is running rampant. And we find ourselves among leadership who would make a statement and make several statements that would excite even more riots, excite even more hatred, that will excite even more killing. We are in desperate need of God. Amen. We're in desperate need. We're in desperate need of preachers these days who will rise up, who will speak truth to who will say it is wrong, who preachers who will stand and say that we cannot continue to let it go without standing and taking a stand. We have been moved back farther than the 1960s. Children are marching in the street and they have a right to. Protesters are, are marching throughout this nation and they have a right to. But even in the midst of their protesting, even in the midst of their marching, they are still being victimized by the leadership of this country. One who will call them thugs, but will call the officer who killed one a good officer. There are good people on every side. I want to say to you today, there are, there are ways that the church has to handle it. We can't burn down our neighborhoods, but there's a way we have to handle it. I understand the words of Dr. King when he says, a riot is the language of the unheard. It is bottled up energy. It is bottled up despair. It is bottled up destitute where young men, young women, as well as the season, don't know how to handle it. And it is those who continue to stir the pot, continue to pit one over the other and one group over the other and support this worldwide hatred. I just want to say to the church today, there's a way we, for, we, for us to handle it. We got to go to God in prayer. We have to make sure that we talk to God about it. Because my word tells me that, that the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And like many rivers, he turns it ever which way. We have to pray it through. We have to, to walk it through. We have to live it through. And certainly we have to march it through. We have to understand that, that there are some who don't like us. There are many who will hate us. There are many who will openly kill us. But we have to know we have to trust in God. I've been saying to young boys and young girls over the last 30 years, when an officer stops you, you make sure that you obey the law. I've said to them, oftentimes you, you can get off and make it home, but sometimes, as we see in the daily news, sometimes, even when you do the right thing, you can't make it home alive. 
It's because there's a lot going on. There's pinned up hatred in the, the heart of young black and brown men. They're being watched. They are, they are being scrutinized. They are being shot at every hand. I tell you, there's a lot going on. The 60s were bad. Civil rights have never been full. But I tell you, we serve a God who never sleeps nor slumbers. He is still in control. When we look at the text, we find such situation. David is on the run. David has been delivered from many battles. His enemies have been after him. And David stops long enough to give honor and praises to God. I want to say to you this morning that if you love the Lord, if you love yourself, if you love your family, stop long enough to tell God about it. Amen. Hope just a little while longer. Wait before you throw the next brick. Wait before you throw the next bomb. Wait before you start the next fire and talk to God about it. Amen. I've been victimized. My first, my, my first evidence was at the age of seven. And all I wanted to do is expand my vocabulary. All I wanted to do is get a newspaper and, and walk away and pick up that newspaper and read it. But in Belzona, Mississippi, I leaned over into, into what was called a newspaper stand. I put my quarter in there, and a quarter was a whole lot of money in 1970. I put my quarter in there, and and the newspaper wouldn't come out. The door wouldn't open. So I began to pull on it. And all of a sudden, this big, huge white lady runs up on me. What are you doing? What's your problem? Get away from there. Leave that alone. I was terrorized. And I was terrified. Not to mention, not to mention, as we ran down the basketball court as teenagers, men would spit tobacco over the rails at us as we ran down the court. Not to mention, as we ran from one base to the other, we would call the N-word on a regular basis. Not to mention fire hoses and dogs that I watched even at the age of five. But they would turn loose on the people who look like me. You see, the conversations that are going on in the black and brown households are not being had in other households. I remember even as a little boy, Emmett Till had been killed years before, but my mama reminded me to watch your talk, watch your conversation when it comes to a white girl. I don't want to lose you all. Be careful. Now here we are in the 21st century and conversations are being had in our households that we're telling our boys and our girls when the police stop you, comply. We are telling them, have your hand on the dashboard. Put your hand, if you're sitting in the back seat, place your hand on the front seat. And now I've moved a step further than that. If you stop, let every window down. Stick your hands out the window. Hands up, don't shoot. I can't breathe. These, these conversations are all about and throughout our households. But we ought to turn to God in these situations. We ought to speak truth to power. We, we ought to speak what God gives us to speak. We ought to march and we ought to lead a protest in a nonviolent way. But we need to stop for a moment. 
and do what David did in 30 of Psalms. David says, I will extol you. He's talking to the Lord. He says, Lord, I will extol you, O Lord. He's talking to the self-existing God. Jehovah God, he's talking to God. Let me just share with you, you have to get to a point in your life where you can sing unto the Lord. Sing unto him, speak to him, talk to him. David talks to the Lord and he says, Lord, I know it's a lot going on. I know they're mistreating me. I know my enemies are all around me. But I'm going to stop for a while, Lord, and I am going to extol you. This word extol means to raise, to lift high, to lift him up. God is looking for us to lift up Jesus, even though things are going on. We are called to talk to the Lord. We are called to pray with the Lord, and we are called to extol him. To lift him, to raise him, to horse him. Yeah, we're called to horse the Lord. We're, we're called to lift up the Lord. We're called to lift the Lord and praise him. In the midst of it, when you don't know what to do, just call on the Lord. When you don't know what to say, sing unto the Lord. When you don't know what to do and don't know what to say, don't know what to sing, you ought to lift the Lord because he is worthy. We know that the government can't get us out this mess. Matter of fact, the government is putting us in this mess with words like when the looting starts, the shooting starts. What kind of leader? What kind of leader would tell the militia, will tell law enforcement of his own nation if they come out of the store with a TV killer, if they come out the store with the with the Xbox, take them out, and then every time goes back on his word. I'm telling you, the key today is we need to lift up the Lord. We need to stop for a moment, pray and talk to the Lord, extol him, lift him, and raise him. The psalmist says that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise you, Lord, so other folk can see it. You see, when we lift the Lord, when we lift the Lord, other people see him and know that he's our God. And they know that he is the only true and the only living God says, I will lift him. I will, I will extol you, Lord, for you have lifted me up. We want to we wanna lift the one who has lifted us. We want to raise God where, where he can be seen because he has lifted us. He has lifted us when we couldn't lift ourselves. People talk about the fact that, oh, I lifted myself with my own bootstraps. I stopped by to tell them that I, I had no boots, so I didn't have any straps. But it was the Lord that lifted me. We were so poor that I thought everybody was, was switching their clothes out with their brothers and their sisters. Black pants on Tuesdays and Thursdays, black jeans. Blue jeans on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We were trained. We, we were reared to, to, to share with each other, to love each other, to walk with each other, and be a part of each other's life. I thought everybody lived like we lived, where, where we shared our food, where, where we shared our clothes, and, and Levon wore the black jeans when I wore the blue jeans. It took the Lord to lift us. See, we had no bootstraps. We, we had no boots many times, so we had to depend on nobody but God. Psalmist David is just like that. He says, 
I will extol you. I will lift you. I will talk to you. I will pray to you, O oh Lord, because you have lifted me up. See, when God lifts you up, he lifts your mind. He, he, lifts, he, he lifts your heart. He, he lifts you out of the murk and the mire. Mm -hmm. and some people that were born in the ghetto, but God brought you out. I dare tell you this morning there are some people that were born in the ghettos of life. God lifted them out. But then there are some people that were born in the ghettos of their mind. And God has transformed your mind. God has lifted us. Lifted us out. He says, and I have not, you have, you have not, you have not let my foes re rejoice over me. They rejoice over me, but God, you are there on my side. Yeah. Lord, you have and have not let my foes rejoice over me. You see, your foes, your enemies, your foes, your haters, your, your foes, those that don't like you, will look to rejoice over you, but God don't let them rejoice. Your foes, you see, it looks like everybody is getting away with what they want to do today. It looks like everybody is doing their own thing today. And it looks like they have power over you. But let me just share with you, the Bible teaches, and I'm saying to you, that God is yet in control and he's still watching it. He is watching everything that goes on. He never sleeps nor slumbers. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. Lord, I cried out to you, and Lord, you healed me. This word heal means to make whole. This word heal means to cure. This word heal is a physician type word and, and God is able to heal us even in the secrets of our minds. Mm -hmm. I know ever since 1970 I've been needing to be healed. I can't count everybody as that same lady. I have to work with those who don't look, look like me. I have to spend time and love those who don't look like me. The Lord has healed me. The Lord has brought me out. I couldn't do it on my own. He says, and I say, as the psalmist says, Lord, my God, I cried out to you. And you healed me. If our nation, if our world going to be made the better, it's going to take the Lord to heal us. If our world is going to be changed, it's going to take the Lord's healing of us. Amen. The chronicle writer was right when he said that if my people who are called according to my name would just humble themselves. The text says in Psalm number 30, the text says we need to humble ourselves and as we humble ourselves, we lift him, we, we raise him, we extort him. Yes. Extol him, we extol him to the point where others can see him. We need to lift up Jesus. Don't worry about lifting you. Lift up Jesus. Amen. Lift up God. And as you lift up God, God will heal you. Yes. God will deliver you. God will, will present before your enemies your new you. You have to let God heal you. God won't let your enemies rejoice over you. You see, your enemies, when your enemies rejoice... They brag about what they have done to you. Regardless of what's going on in this United States of America, God is yet in control, and God is seeing it all, and God is going to fix it. We just ought to sing to the Lord. We ought to praise unto the Lord. We ought to honor and obey the Lord. It says, I cried out unto the Lord, and Lord, you healed me. Verse number three, Psalm number 30 says, Oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Yes, the Lord has, has kept us. 
The Lord has kept our soul from Hades. This word grave is Hades. This word grave is hell. And if you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and received him by faith, then God has delivered you from hell. He's delivered us. He, he has delivered us from the penalty of sin. He has strengthened us. He, he, has, he has shown us that we don't have to fight the battles on our own. We need to talk to God, meaning pray to him. We need to raise God, meaning we ought to lift him. We ought to extol him to the point where other men will see God and not see us. Oh, Lord, you, you brought my soul up. From the grave. We're on our way to hell. But God rescued us. God delivered us. The enemy was killing us. But God kept us. God is the only one. Who can and will keep us. He says you kept me alive. God you kept me. You kept me alive. You, you kept me alive. So much so Lord. That you, you preserved me. Lord, you kept me alive. You restored me. Lord, you kept me alive. You have repaired me. Thank God he repaired me. Thank God that God didn't leave me the way I used to be. Thank God that the Lord didn't leave me as I wanted to be. He has kept me. He, he has kept me alive. He, he's kept my mental factors alive. He's kept my physical body alive. He has kept me. He has quickened me. This word alive means to be quickened. It, 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 is, it is the same word. We get the word to recover. When you're sick and you're, you think you're going to die, it's only God that recovers us. God has recovered me. He saved me. He kept me alive. Let me tell you, I was on my way to hell. Yes. I, wasn't, I wasn't fit to live. Wasn't good enough to die. I was on my way to hell. But, but God recovered me. He revived me. He gave me surely, surely he gave me to be whole. This word, keeping alive, means that God has rescued me from a burning hell. I was on my way. I was on my way with bells on. I was on my way. I was messed up, but God kept me. And I'm appreciative to the fact that he kept me. He kept me from going down into the pit. He kept me from, from going down into the pit. He kept me from going down to this dungeon. He kept me from going to prison. I deserve to be in prison. I messed up many times. It's not because I've been so good. It's because of God's mercy and God's grace. And if you were to tell the truth, the truth of the matter is you've done enough to be incarcerated yourself. You've never been so good. You haven't been so good that you didn't deserve to die. You haven't been so good that you didn't deserve to go to prison. All of us ought to have parole officers because we deserve to be locked up for some of the stuff we have done, some of the things that we've thought, and for the way we've carried ourselves. But God, but God, that God, God didn't let us go down into the pit. Finally, in verse number four, Psalm number number thirty says, "Sing praises to the Lord, you saints of His." And give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. David, David is, is talking to God in the first three verses. But then when he gets to verse number four, he started talking to folk. He began to talk to people. Let me tell you, if you're living in this world, let me just let you know, you're not an island all by yourself. There are people around you. There are, even in this quarantine, we are hanging out with some people. Will we tell them about God? Will we evangelize them? Will we tell them of God's goodness? 
Will we tell them of God's mercy? Or will we just let things go as status quo? Do our own thing and, and, and I don't have to worry about it. It's, it's their thing. Let them do what they want to do. Or will we tell them about Jesus? Oftentimes use the, use the analogy when people say it's none of my business. I don't need to talk to him about this. It's none of my business. I use the analogy of two people rowing in a boat. And they get about 60 feet out in the water. And once they get about 60 feet out in the water, one of them that's in the boat begin to take a drill. Now this is the people, these are the people who says it's none of my business. You get about 60 feet out in the water and one person takes out a drill and begin to drill holes in the boat that you are sitting in. You say it's not your thing. You say he's doing his own thing. But once he starts drilling a hole in the boat that you're in, then it's your thing. We can't let young brothers, young sisters, nor seniors walk around without dealing with them, without ministering to them, without, without influencing them. And that's what David does here in Psalm number 30. He says, come on, y'all. Let's sing to the Lord. All of you saints. You see, the problem is some of us have declared ourselves saints when we really ain't. And if you've declared yourself a saint, it ought to show some sign in your lifestyle. There's a lot going on. There's trouble all around us. Life has been greatly impacted during this 21st century. We have to call men to faith by accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The psalmist says, Come on, you all, let's sing to the Lord, all you saints. Every saint of God ought to be singing unto the Lord. Every saint of God ought to be exalting, exhausting themselves to exalt the Lord, to praise the Lord, to lift the Lord. David says that God, my enemies, was looking to rejoice, but you wouldn't let them rejoice over me. You see, the enemies in these great, great United States of America are rejoicing right now. Regardless of how many marches you see, there are people out there that's looking to victimize the marches. Now they are thugs. But when they were doing their thing, they weren't thugs. I say to you today, all the saints, we got to get together. And praise the Lord. We got to thank him regardless of what's going on around us. We got to praise him and sing praises unto his name because we are praising him in advance before we see it in our eyes. We got to praise him in advance. Final part of verse number four. The psalmist says, give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. The psalmist says, give thanks. You ought to have thanksgiving at, at times other than the Thursday, the found Thursday in November. Thanksgiving has to be every day. We ought to have thanksgiving on our heart. Thanksgiving in our mind. I told you before, one of the worst things a child can do is be ungrateful, to be unthankful, we have to be thankful for what God has done for us. If you're listening to me today, you ought to be thankful that you have health and strength. Amen. Because the virus is all around us and we don't know where it is. And we don't know who has it. And we ought to be thankful for what God has done. He has healed us and he has kept us whole. We ought to be thankful that, that no bricks or any bottles came against us this weekend. We ought to be thankful that our children are at home safely. We ought to be thankful that God has given us one more chance to lift his name, one more chance to say hallelujah to his name. We ought to be thankful. Amen. And every now and then, you ought to stop enough. Stop doing things enough. Stop saying things enough to sing praises 
unto the almighty God. Yeah, we ought to sing praises to him. We ought, we ought to, it doesn't matter how well you sing or how you cannot sing. You ought to give praises unto the Lord for what the Lord has already done. The psalmist says, give thanks at his remembrance of his holy name. What he's saying to us, don't consider what he's done. Just consider who he is. He has a holy name. We ought to give thanks to him. We ought to shout out to him. We ought to confess unto him. We ought to shoot things toward him. We ought to bless his name. We ought to worship him because of his holy name. We ought to have remembrance. We ought to have total recall of his name. We ought, we ought to memorize him and remember what he's done. Be thankful until unto his holy his holy name the psalmist says that you have kept me from the depths of hell God has done that for some of you today he has kept you from the depths of hell he, he has saved you and he did it over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary by giving his only unique son his only begotten son his only first class class citizens. God gave his son for us. He, he died over 2,000 years ago. And they hung him high. They dropped him low. They stretched him wide. He died for you and he died for me. We ought to rejoice over the fact that Jesus gave his life for us. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because under that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. It was a barber tomb because God gave, Jesus gave that brand new tomb back to Joseph early that third day morning. That Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And the Bible says, if I believe that story, the Bible says that if I trust in that story, I can die and go to heaven when I die. Yes. Thank God that he's rescued me from a dying hell. Thank God that he has healed me in my body, in my mind, and in my soul. Thank God that he's rescued me. He's rescued me from a dying hell. He's rescued me. And the psalmist says to us today, we ought to sing praises unto the Lord. We ought to sing praises unto him because of his holy, his righteous, his powerful name. Amen. There may be some listening to me today who cannot identify with this God we're talking about. I recommend Jesus to you today that you trust him as your personal Lord and Savior. I recommend Jesus, one who died on a skull hill called Calvary. I recommend Jesus, the one who they laid in a barbed tomb. I recommend Jesus, the one who got up early that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. If you want to go to heaven when you die, you're going to have to come through Jesus. Jesus, the one who died for you. Jesus, the Christ. He's waiting on you. He's beckoning for you. You ought to come to Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Come to Jesus just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. You got to trust Jesus to get it right for you. The door is open. Will you come? The way you come, the way you receive Jesus as your Savior is just repeating a simple prayer after me. Trusting that Jesus is the Son of God. That he died on a bar on a skull hill called Calvary. Not only was it a borrowed tomb, it was a borrowed hill. He died. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. Not 
not only was the hill borrowed, but not only was the cross borrowed, not only was the tomb borrowed, his grave clothes were borrowed. Jesus gave it back that day. He rose from the dead with all power, recovering power, rescuing power in his hand. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, just repeat after me this simple prayer and invite him into your life. Will you do that? Trust him today. Trust Jesus to be your Savior today. Why don't you bow with me and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Why don't we thank God for those who have come those that God has given them a new lease on life. Thank you for receiving Jesus as your personal Savior. There may be others of you who struggle with sin like I do. Why don't you give your life to Christ and let him be your Lord. I know you say he's already your Savior. But let him be your leadership, your guide, your, your Lord. And there may be some who, who don't know how to do that. Just submit to Jesus. Submit to his word. And let him be your Lord and lead you and guide you. There may be others of you who don't have a church home or in between church homes. I recommend the New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. If you receive Jesus as your Savior, just inbox me and let me know so I can rejoice with you. But if you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church, please inbox me and let me know that you have chosen the church where Jesus is the center of attention, where Jesus is the main attraction. And even on Zoom and even on Facebook Live, we will give you the right hand of welcome and the fellowship to the New Beginning Church. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. And thank you for being a part of our time together this morning. We appreciate those who've been supporting our church financially. And those who've been mailing in their offering. And those who have been giving to the New Beginning Church by way of of mailing it in and also by way of our cash tag. Thank you again for being a part of our church. Thank you so much for, for giving to our church for and many of you have been sending in your offering through Cash App. And some of you have been sending in your offering by mail. And we're asking you today to continue to do so. You can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77489. And for the New Beginning members, you can mail in your tithes, your offering, and your sacrificial gifts. The P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 
For those of you who prefer the electronic way, you can send your offering by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Dollar sign, dollar sign, NBC Soul. Dollar signs, NBC Souls. And it will come right to the New Beginning Church and we will use it to go forward in ministry. Thank you for joining us at our Sunday worship service. You can still join us at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, every Sunday morning for our Bible study, 9 a.m. You can join us again at this worship service every Sunday at 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. And you can join us on Wednesday at 7.20 p.m. Please, ma'am, please, sir, be a part of our service and be a part of our lives and watch what God does with you and, and through you. God is, is blessing us again and we thank him for it. Thank you for giving. Thank you for attending. Thank you for your supporting. And thank you for being a part of our service once again at the New Beginning Church. Mail in your offering. Mail in your, uh, send messages by way of Facebook or Zoom to, to me and let me know the commitments that you've made. And to our visitors, thank you for being faithful to our ministry. Thank you for giving, thank you for attending, and thank you for being a part. We do not take it for granted that you are an active part of our ministry. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We want to lift up the Holman Street Church. We want to lift up Pastor Manson Johnson's family as he made his transition to be with the Lord this morning. So we want to lift up the Holman Street Missionary Baptist Church where I preached my first sermon in 1992. This is my spiritual father in the ministry. Went on to be with the Lord. And we want to lift up that church. We want to lift up the Johnson family and let them know we're praying with them and praying for them in times like these. I tell you, it's a lot going on, but we have to look to God sing praises unto him and bless his name. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to hear your word, to speak your word, to live your word. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless everyone who's heard this word, that they will let it fall on good soil and they will be doers of the word as well as hearers. We pray for the Holman Street Missionary Baptist Church. We pray for the Johnson family. We pray that you minister to them in times like these as only you can. Bless them and walk with them. Keep them in their struggles. Lead them with great direction. And bless their lives, Father God, that they will continue to be a solid church, an evangelizing church, a discipling church. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Johnson and the impact he made on my life and so many others. Thank you for the, the Holman Street Church and the beacon light that they've shined bright in this dark and dismal world. Lord, we ask you to keep us now. Bless us to sing unto the Lord. Bless us to raise the Lord. Bless us to be thankful unto the Lord. And bless his name, for his name is holy. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, join me in saying, Amen. Thank you for joining us. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night for our Bible study. Be blessed. Keep in touch.